Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. How are you today? Lovely to see you all. And lovely to have you with me on this lovely Saturday morning. I've had to shut the curtains, though. I've had to shut the curtains to keep the sun off the screen. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, Sue. Lovely to have you with us. With us? It's only me. Although where I'm from in the black country, us means me. One person. Same as we can mean one person. But, you know, I'm not there. I'm in Oxfordshire now. I've gone posh. I've moved south, so... Um... Morning from sunny and Uneaton. Hello, Melanie. Hi, Joe. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Morning, Sandy. Bonjour. Sunny France. Is it sunny everywhere? Do we think? It's lovely to have you here. I'll just wait another minute or two. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Janet. Oh, happy birthday, Sally. Now, hang on a minute. Have I got... Oh, I haven't got it here. I must have it on my old, um, morning, Lauren. I've normally got happy, morning, Samantha, sunny Norwich, Northwich, sorry. Morning from Nottingham, morning, Louise. Hi, Jean. Sally, I know, morning, Sandra. Oh, ah, lovely to have you with us, Sandra. Uh, we've missed you in the classes lately. Um, Sally, you're going to have to have me singing happy birthday instead. I normally have, um... A happy birthday thing but it's missing off my uh, off my screen I normally have a button to press and it blows everyone's ears off so happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear Sally happy birthday to you wonderful harmonies out there thank you very much for joining me in in wishing sally a happy birthday hello jill from devon nice to have you oh look at all these birthday wishes you're getting sally isn't that lovely morning jane <clears throat> I need to dig out my happy birthday button for when it's a student's birthday. I thought it must be on my laptop at home from when I teach evenings and weekend classes um, at home. So I, if I do get any customers this morning, I, I know how dare they not be watching um, this live stream. But if I do, I will have to go down and serve. So it can make things a little bit longer. So it's not a class today, but it's a chat about watercolours and how to make them lighter, how to make them darker, because there's lots of things involved. Or there are, there are several ways in which you can do this. Excuse my squeaky chair. It's not my knees, honestly. It's my chair. I'll get some bird song up. Just so we can really feel the beautiful sunshine. Wherever you're watching from today. I know, and I haven't even charged you for singing. I know. Sell out tickets. Um, so, Hue Tint Shade. It, it's a really interesting discussion, all of this business. Because, hello Joe. Um, hue is colour. So, any colour on your cut. See, I've got me, I've got me arrow out again. Any colour is a hue. And that hue can be lightened or darkened. The tricky thing is that each hue that is lightened, when it's lightened it becomes a tint, and when it is darkened it becomes a shade. Once that happens, that tint or shade also becomes a hue. 
that's why it can be a bit difficult. But, also, on a tube of paint, let's see if I can find one. Find one in my classroom. Of course I can find a tube of paint. Right, on here, you see this is, um, it says, you probably won't read it. Let me zoom in on the camera a little bit. This says cadmium red hue. Now, this is where it becomes confusing because that word hue does not mean colour, like it says there. That hue means fake. Ish. So, where you sometimes it's in brackets, they, they used to put it in brackets, now it's not. Um, so where it says hue next to certain colours, I, I can see here I've got cerulean blue hue, lemon yellow hue, cadmium yellow hue, cadmium red hue. On artist's quality paint tubes it won't say that because that cadmium red in an artist quality paint has got real cadmium in it. Cadmium red hue doesn't have any cadmium anywhere near it. So... Hue means ish. On a student quality tube, cadmium red hue, cadmium red ish. It's not pure cadmium red. That's not the same as the general terminology for hue, tint or shade. Does that make any sense? Does it? I don't know. I can never tell. I've got lots of colours out here. Um... If I start from the top left, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, crimson, burnt sienna. Going across the top, cerulean, ultramarine and Chinese white. <coughs> I'm not going too fast, am I? Is it making sense? Hue is the colour. I know, I know, Sue. I, I mean, I think they could have just used a prox or ish. I'd have been happy with ish, to be quite honest. I'd have been very happy with ish. Because um, it doesn't make sense. Because it is confusing. Because of the word hue that's already existed. Um, I suppose it's a colour of cadmium red. I suppose that's where they get it. If hue means colour, it is the colour of cadmium red without it being cadmium red. Oh no, I know. I know. I don't. I don't do this. I. I just teach it. I. Did, I. I don't. Can you imagine if I did invent the art vocabulary world? My word. Can you imagine? <clears throat> so. When you lighten a colour, it becomes a tint. When you darken a colour, it becomes a shade. Um, you may... Yeah, I can. There's lemon yellow hue, cadmium yellow hue, cadmium red hue, because these are all student qualities, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna. Cerulean blue ultramarine and Chinese white. So tone and value are a bit similar to be quite honest. It's all where where they are on the colour spectrum or each colour. So you'll hear a lot of terminology. So a, a true tone is a hue. People will talk about colour values. So the tone is how light or dark something is. So a, a, a light, a, a, a tint is a tone. Really, a shadow is a tone. Um, so every single colour can produce a variety of tones, um, and also it depends on what's going on around them.
if, in some sense, yellow is a hue. Let's look at lemon yellow. Lemon yellow is a hue. But it's a light hue. So you're not going to get a wide range of tones because you can only go so far with your lights and darks, if that makes any sense. Whereas with deeper, vibrant hues, you can get a brighter, broader spectrum of tone. I've got a couple of people in my shop, so I'm just going to leave you with that fact. And I'll try my hardest to be as fast as I can. Apologies.
I'm back. Did you miss me? Okay. <coughs> yes, it is like musical notes. Yeah, it is exactly that. It, it's sort of, um, it's the same as composition in music is arranged so it's pleasing to the ear. Composition in art is arranged so it's pleasing to the eye. So it's all very much of a muchness. Well, I'm out of breath now. Oh, it's a long run from the shop to the, to the classroom. Think of the step count. So I'm using number four round just for this. So basically, I can show you the range of tone in a colour. So if I start on the left hand side and just keep adding water we're naturally lightening the yellow paint so it fades into the white so the white of the paper is what lightens the watercolour. Do the same with the cadmium red, yellow. So I'm lightening, creating tone, and creating tints. Let's put a bit more colour at the top. It is those stairs, but they're good for you, Rosemary, aren't they? Oh. Let's eke that out a little bit more. So you can see I've got a wide range of tone or colour values or tints. And each section, if we divided this up into a grid, each one of these would be a hue by itself because each hue can be lightened and darkened. It does get a little bit confusing. Now because cadmium red is a much stronger hue, it will take me longer, I'm only going to stick to this area though, it will take me longer to get back to nothing. But can you see how the white of the paper is lightening the colour? Which is very different to if we're adding white paint. Now generally, and I know it's confusing, generally, this is crimson, you don't use white paint in watercolour. Almost 99% of watercolour paintings don't have white in them. It's the white paper that you use to create tints. And you might say, well, Barry, why does a set have white watercolour in? No idea, because I think there are plenty of other colours that they could use in a set to make it more useful, to be honest. But what I will tell you is watercolours dry 30% lighter. I haven't said that today. So here's our cerulean. If I didn't have enough stairs, I wouldn't be able to get to the top, would I? <laughs> so we're lightening using water. Water only. I'm going to show you quite a few different tips today. <coughs> Let's go with ultramarine. The white can be useful in some situations. Do you know, um, you, do you know, like the opium poppy leaf is that sort of silvery green? It's hard to get that silvery green without the addition of white. Um, now, I'm not a watercolour purist. I'm not a purist in any form, to be quite honest. I, I do feel that anything goes, and as long as what works for you is good, and you understand the materials you're using then it doesn't matter. Where I don't like it <coughs> is when people use 
cheapy stuff, sell it for a fortune and don't realise that it will fade within two years. That's kind of where I get a little bit annoyed because I, I think if people are buying art as an investment, they at least deserve to know how long that, that painting or piece of artwork will last for. Um, so there's not enough research from an artist often going into what materials they buy. They just get the cheapest they can get their hands on in order to sell it for the higher price. Not all artists, but some. <clears throat> and let's go in with a bit of burnt sienna so generally we don't use white in watercolor it's discouraged in 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 many colors you don't need it you can see here i've got pinks pale icy blues and i've not needed to add anything to it so this will change more so when i add uh, when it dries because it will dry 30 percent lighter than the color that we've got okay so we've got a hue and a tint. So that's our main colour. That's the strongest that we can get it neat. But we can get it lighter. So from our hue here we've created tints. Tints. Now let me have a look. For example, if I get if I get cadmium red. and Chinese white. Now there are two different whites. Generally in student quality you get Chinese white which is semi-opaque. <clears throat> oh gosh Christine, no. Um, not nearly all art supplies unless you're paying through the nose are not colour fast. Um, particularly pencils. In fact there's only one one true brand of pencil, colouring pencil, that is um, light fast and that's the uh, Caran d'Ache Luminance. Then underneath that, you've got the Light Fast Pencil by Derwent. All other pencils, watercolour pencils, colouring pencils, are not light fast. Marker pens are not light fast. Copic markers, which are £5 a marker, are not light fast. Um, Cotman, this is, weirdly, Cotman is a student paint, yet it is fairly light fast. Um... But it's important to know. I'll have to do if we get time today. I'll um I'll chat about how you can tell. Um, they will fade in the sun over a number of years, so it won't be quick. Um, this this brand of paint definitely won't. You're looking at ten, fifteen, twenty years before they start fading. Um, but the cheaper, cheaper brands of paints will. They're they're what's known as fugitive, and they fade. They escape, the colour escapes like a fugitive very quickly. So I'm just going to add a bit of uh, Chinese white to my cadmium red. Now this makes pink. But do you notice the difference? Let me clean my brush and let me do water and cadmium red. Right, I have pink. They're both pink. That is just by using the white of the paper to glow through the paint. That is using white paint to make pink with the red. Now, I'm not going to say that is right, that is wrong. Because who am I to say any of that? Um, I will say... That is extremely chalky. It is no longer... Um, yet some colour pencil ranges are, Harry, but not as a whole brand. Um, and it, that that's the important thing to make. And also, you'd be surprised how many professional artists do not even know. Um, I was talking to a Copic uh, illustrator who didn't realise that none of the colours in Copic marker pens, for example, are colour fast or light fast. Um, and therefore they were selling their work for a lot of money um, and that will fade within five years. 
So my point is it's important to do research on the brands that you're looking at if you're planning on selling your work for a lot of money. If you're not, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you like for your own uh, for your own fun or for your own learning or for um, or if you're selling it just for for a little bit. Um, and I think that's the important thing. I, I know I, I belong to a lot of artists groups on Facebook and they all just want cheap, cheap, cheap to sell high, high, high. Yet they don't realise that the cheapy stuff isn't isn't good. It's not light fast. It's not permanent. It's not not in not a good enough quality to demand the prices that they're selling them for so it's important to look and if i get time today i will definitely chat to you all about um how you can check your watercolor paints because that's what we're looking at today so that has got very chalky and can you see it's actually dried not lighter you can see how all of this side has uh, gone a lot lighter 30 percent sue yes um, so I'm a big fan of using white paper and water to lighten your paint. The white, um, the white paint with your watercolour, you lose the watercoloriness <laughs> of it. I, some are not the whole range, Sally, I think, um, and, and light fast is in varying intensities. So they could all be light fast, but only light fast within five to ten years. Some might be light fast within 50 to 100 years. Some might be light fast within five to 600 years. Um, so you need to look like Harry was talking about light fast rating. Sometimes they have um, a number. Sometimes they have a star, depending on the brand. Um, Christine, when would I use white? I wouldn't. If I'm honest, unless I was making a specific shade of green, I generally wouldn't use white in watercolour. I will use personally, and this is only personally, I would only use white in very rare occasions. And the reason why I say that, and I'm not an art snob or a purist, is because if you're using Naples yellow, for example, some brands of Naples yellow are cadmium yellow and white. Or cadmium yellow, yellow ochre and white. So there is white paint in some watercolours. If you see a colour and it says, I don't know, cobalt turquoise light, there's white in it. If the colour says light, there's white in it. Um, so even watercolourists who, who were very anti-white still use white if they use those colours. But it's already mixed in the tube. So... I can I can create a three-dimensional shape just using one colour and varying degrees of water. So if I go with crimson, I just want a little and I'm going I'm only using crimson on this one because I mucked it up and I dribbled a bit on here. So um let's use crimson with a lot of water. Because the light is coming from the upper right. But what I what basically what I try to do is I just like to educate people so they understand the materials that they're using. Because um, especially if you go into the realms of selling your work, it's so important to know how much to sell something for or how, you know for sketching there's a wonderful brand of, of watercolor called Anna Linky and it's a watercolor dye and they're the most vibrant paint in the world they're really cheap it's a tenner for 26 colors we sell them but they're not light fast in any sense and um, they fade within two years in sunlight but they're really good for for practice and for cards or prints so <clears throat> you can use a light fast there's crimson on here so I'm, ju I'm just awakening this pigment a little bit um so i'm using slightly more pigment and less water for this side um so if you like like with the copic artist 
If you're using Copic pens, that is fine, but you're probably better off keeping the original and making prints because most proper prints are light fast for 70 to 100 years. So it really does depend on on what 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 your your goal is. So now I'm using even more pigment. I'm going to have to use a little bit of a, a white edge just so they don't all run into each other. Right, so there we go. Same colour, three tones. Just by using more or less water or pigment. So that works really, really well. <clears throat> How do you darken a colour? Well, we know we... we on face value, we can't go any darker than the colours that we've already got on the tile. And if you think about it, a blob of paint is like a million layers of films of, of colour. Of, of that one colour. So built up. It's a, an intense block of colour. So with, with the colour alone, I can't go any darker than that you can build it up so if i if i wanted to um if i have a a, a well that, let's put a bit of crimson here and let that dry i might get a hair dryer on it because of the time factor it always surprises me how fast time flies so it's quick hair dry a bit of noise Oh gosh, good question, Sue. How can you tell when buying a painting that it will last? You won't. You have to hope that um, the artist selling it knows and you can ask them. And the price is a big factor on that, um, hopefully, generally. If you're buying high-end artist's quality pigments that are extremely light, fast and, and all of that kind of stuff, um, then generally the painting will be a lot more expensive. Um but you just have to hope that the artist has done his homework and that's why I'm really keen on educating artists just as much as I am educating students because, um, I, as I say, I know lots of artists that don't understand the materials they use and they don't know how light fast something is. They've never even thought about it. Use the same colour here, look, over the top and it will go darker. And if I blast this with a hairdryer... I can't find the hook now. But saying that, some of my five pound watercolours in my pot look box are painted with artist's quality. So you're paying a fiver for a painting that will last about two, three hundred years. Um there we go, look, I can use the same colour again and I've got a darker tone. And I can keep building it up until I get it that dark, but I can't go any darker than that. So, <clears throat> well, no, this is it. A lot, of, a lot of museums don't use natural light. And if you go to National Trust Properties as well, uh, Whittick Manor in Wolverhampton... Um, they have to have the curtains shut for half of the year because um, it will damage a lot of the pigments on the paintings and on the, the furnishings and what have you. So, you know, nothing's, nothing's, uh, you know, just because it's old, it doesn't mean that it's light fast. And, you know, the, the, it's a whole new demo, that is, a whole chat about it. So how can you darken watercolour? There are two ways. Way number one, let me get the reference colour wheel up. If you have a colour... Whatever it is opposite in the colour wheel will dull it down. This is a true colour wheel, by the way, rather than the traditional colour wheel that you will be familiar with. Um, this is a pure colour wheel. Because generally, 
on a standard colour wheel, red is opposite green and um, blue is opposite orange and all of this. But this time, it, it's, it's subtle variations. And there are ways you can work out the opposites of the colour. And I can I can show you, but if you want to dull a colour down, some paint some artists call it knocking back. Um, you use the complementary opposite. <clears throat> so let's say I've got red here, and I want to dull it down or darken it. Red and green are opposite each other. So if I make a green from lemon yellow and ultramarine, say. I don't want to use a lot. Be sparing. There you go. Look, can you see how that's dulled it down? If I used too much green, it will go brown. But enough green will knock it back. Similarly, if I've got green... Let's make a green again from lemon yellow and ultramarine. If I've got green, I can knock it back or dull it down with a tiny bit of red. Just a little bit. So red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. Or you can go a little bit more precise if you wanted. Um, so it, it, it does go a very... You have to be very sparing if you're going precise. So a precise complementary pairing is ultramarine and cadmium yellow. If I add a bit of it, if I add too much, it'll go green. If I add a little bit, it'll just be a dull blue. And I'll, I'll explain how I got there. And this is where you need to understand your colour. So ultramarine. And so, right, let me do traditional colour wheel. You've got um, blue and orange. Red and green and purple and yellow on a colour wheel. So understanding these colours, ultramarine is a blue purple. So if I write this stacked blue purple... The opposite of blue is orange, and the opposite of purple is yellow. So the complementary opposite of a blue-purple ultramarine is an orange-yellow, which is cadmium yellow. Let's look at cadmium. Let's look at cadmium red. Now, cadmium red is a red-orange. Complementary of red is green. The complementary of orange is blue. So the precise pairing of cadmium red is cerulean blue. So if I do a bit of cadmium red, and add a tiny weeny bit of cerulean, That darkens my red. In a nicer way than using the, the, the bland greeny colour. Let's use one more colour for this because I only use 
two of each primary so we should be all right so let's go with lemon yellow lemon yellow is a um, yellow green opposite of yellow is purple opposite of green red so the complementary opposite of lemon yellow is crimson so either way let's 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 do that let's go with lemon yellow and add a smidge of crimson that will slightly dull down my yellow if I wanted to do it the other way I could go with my crimson and add a little bit of lemon but to do that you need to understand your complementary pairings fascinating isn't it you might think it's not I, d I don't know but I find it fascinating so that's how you can work out your complementary pairings for each color or you could just stick to uh, that doing it the way I've just shown you shows that you don't need to um, mix more than two colors together it always gets a bit muddy when you add three colors into the mix so red and green or um, purple and orange you need unless you've got that color but we'll <clears throat> we'll stick with it okay so let's go with this cube and I'm going to go I'm just going to cover it all in cerulean I should be I should be neat and I'm not being neat because I've just seen the time but I'll give you a few extra minutes because I had to uh, had to go and serve um <clears throat> just screenshot that and uh, uh, do you know what our logo is a true color wheel um in in some sense it's it's not quite digital and it's not uh, but it's it's easier with digital rather than paint i'm just gonna make a bit of noise You see, in my colour mixing, it doesn't say on the tube, Sue, unfortunately. Um, I can give you an idea, though. Um, basically, the colour wheel was invented in the 1700s, and it was only ever meant as a guide. Since then, it's been taken on as law. Um, and that presumes that you can make every single colour from one red, one yellow, and one blue. And that's not the case, and that's not what the colour wheel was there for. Even artists in the um, Renaissance used two primaries of each tone. So you get a green-based blue and a purple-based blue, a green-based yellow and an orange-based yellow, an orange-based red and a purple-based red. Um, okay, Sue, how can you tell if it's green-yellow or orangey-yellow? Does it say on the tube? Sadly, it does not. Um, if you... Uh, ask me I can tell you but if you look on any art shop wall the way the colors are displayed are green yellows orange yellows oranges orange reds purple reds purples purple blues green blues greens earth tones brown all colour charts are exactly the same. So if you've got um, um, lemon, lemon yellow is green based, cadmium yellow, orange based, cadmium red, orange based, crimson, purple based, cerulean blue, green based, ultramarine, purple based. I did a list um, on the shop's Facebook page um, a while back that said... Um, what colours are used and what they leaned towards. 
So I'm going to do this cerulean blue using its precise complementary of cadmium red. So let me add quite a lot of admium, admium of because <laughs> cadmium red to the dark side. Still blue. And then I'll add more blue into that. So it's still got a little bit in, but not as much. Oh, Rosemary, could you do that? Because I don't know how to do that on here. I haven't got enough hands. So there we go. Look, just using a precise complementary pairing, I've been able to shade the colours. Last thing I want to show you is one more way. Um, you have to buy stars first, Joe, and then you send them. Oh, somebody sent me some stars. I did wonder what that noise was. You can see I'm really technical, can't you? Oh, thank you, Liz. That's really lovely of you. Thank you, Joe. You can come again. I find it I find it I find it fascinating. So just by adding red we've changed that. So there's one more way um, and my watercolour students will know how I add shadow. I make a shadow colour and my shadow colour is cadmium red and ultramarine. And I either add more blue and more red depending on what I want to create. So to me this is the perfect shadow because it goes with everything. Because if you think about it, we've got blue. Ultramarine's a purple blue, so we've got purple and blue covered. Cadmium red is an orange red, so we've got red and orange covered. So in theory, if I glaze over a colour with a shadow, it will make a difference. So I'm going to make a green. Let me make a green just to show you, I, knew, I do know how to mix colours. And I'm going to... Uh, I'll do a bit of glazing when this is dry. Um, I don't know if I do get the full donation of stars. I get, I get one penny for every star sent. Um, so you could do a PayPal donation. I mean, I've... I'm a bit rubbish, really, because I, you know how much I love doing my job, and I forget that it is a job, and I do need to pay bills. I'm a bit rubbish at that. Um, but some people prefer stars if they're a bit dubious about PayPal. Some people prefer PayPal. Doesn't uh, to be honest, I'm just grateful that you're watching. Um, most people can't stomach listening to me for too long, so well done for lasting. 45 minutes right so I'm doing a, a a green so this is just a green from lemon and ultramarine da, da, da. so this could have been a tree let me let me get a a bit of hair dryer on this shoot my pencil across the room Na, 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 na. Are you enjoying this demo and are you finding it useful? That is the important thing. Okay. Fingers crossed. Let's mix me purple. Um, you can use purple that's pre-mixed. I have been known to do that myself. Um... But you end up having to put a bit of yellow in there to dull it down because yellow and purple complementary colours. So this is green. If I add a, a red purple mix, it's going to go more of a brown shadow. If I add a blue purple mix, because ultramarine's already in there, it will look better. So let me mix a bit more ultramarine in there. Pull out a little bit of colour and lighten it. You can. This this will stay on the shop's video section forever. 
on Facebook. If it allows me to download it, um, I will also put it on our website and our YouTube channel. So <clears throat> another quick tip. When I mix a colour in watercolour, I mix the dark colour. Then I pull some of that out and add water to it. When you're glazing, you have to be quite quick because you, you can end up lifting off the colour that's underneath. I should be using a bigger brush, really. There we go. So there's our mid-green. Now, it's funny It's funny to upload pictures on a live. I, I'll, I'll try and um, add a tag or something. So if I was using my big squirrel brush, this would work. So can you see how beautifully one shadow colour for them all? Um, and you might say, will that work? Because shadows are colourful. They're not black. There we go. Look. Something like that got a shadow on the floor can that shadow color glaze and shade all the others well let's have a look yes 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 what about the pink? Yes. So your purple, cadmium red and ultramarine. And the reason why, um, Liz, as soon as this video finishes, as soon as I end the video in a minute or two, it will take a minute or two to process. And then if you go to our main shop book, Facebook page, the one that you're on now, Along the top, it will say something like shop, um, posts, groups, images, or media, or videos. It's either under media or videos, and you'll be able to watch it. But if I can upload it, I will put it on our YouTube channel, and then it will also go on our website, thearteryonline.com, under our free uh, free resources. So I hope that you found this really, really useful. Um, let me just jot this colour down so you can see that. So shadow is ultramarine plus cad red. So that is a really useful colour for everything when you're shading trees, um, or when you're adding a shadow on. So generally, I won't mix several different tones of colour. I will add a shadow colour to the whole thing. And that makes a massive difference. One second and I'll find you a picture. If I know where I'm putting. Here we are. So that is using a couple of different shades of orangey cream colour but there is our cadmium red and ultramarine shadow colour in varying strengths to give us depth and tone into the scene so what's going on in july it's a new booklet let me see. What, what am I inflicting on you as a demo in July? There are two exciting things in July, by the way, I think. I think. 3rd of July. How to create layers of green foliage in acrylics. It will kind of work for watercolours as well. So that is 11 o'clock on the 3rd of July. But also on the 24th of July, we've got a free class. A free full length class, 11 till 12.30, and it's a watercolour class with a child on a beach in wellies. 
So there we go. I never did get round to um, telling you how um, how to look for permanent ratings and what have you. Um, what I'll try and do, I'll add. I can add images to this once I've um, finished the live. I will add the image of my colours and what they are, orange based, green based, whatever. And I'll also add an image of something I created called how to read a tube of paint. And it tells you all the information on there because there are on some tubes of paint little squares and the square tells you how opaque or transparent it is. This one will tell you the permanence and the light fastness. Um, so that says this cerulean is permanence A, which is pretty good. Permanence A for lemon yellow, which is pretty good. Double A is the best. Permanence A, cadmium red. So although these are Cotman, they are permanent. I think I have. I think I have. But I'll, I'll see if I can add it on to keep it all together. So thank you so, so much for giving up your sunny Saturday uh, morning. Um, maybe this has inspired you to, to go and uh, play with your watercolours. It's so important to explore what you're doing. Don't just go, well, I want to do a painting. Play. We lose, we've lost the, the realm of play. We always think we have to achieve. Whereas far more learning is achieved when you actually explore and play rather than just sitting down doing a painting. Um, so just allow yourself... To play and and then you'll learn a lot more but this video will always be available for you to refer to so thank you so so much for your company and time we've got loads of classes coming up next week online possibly reopening our classroom in july but i'm keeping an eye on the the the, the variants and 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 all of this kind of thing so i'm i'm not going to promote it yet because I don't know if it's going to fully happen. So we'll we'll keep an eye. But lots of exciting things. Online shop open 24-7, theartryonline.com or head to Shop Appy and uh, find the Artery or Banbury on there. Or our shop is open Tuesdays to Saturdays, 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Um, I'm glad you've learned a lot and you can watch it back, uh, the bit that you missed. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the sunshine. Please look after yourselves and stay safe and uh, enjoy yourselves. See you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.